Hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Today we're going to take a deep dive on cyber truck collision repair and the uh, paradigm shift that is really required uh, when fixing these things. So, um, what we know about Cybertruck is uh, sort of an exoskeleton. You know, you've all seen videos where we understand that these uh, panels are bulletproof, um, which is very unusual. So, one of the first things that all of us, so the repairs, the customers, especially the insurers, um, is that we're probably going to send up a million red flags when we start to fix these things, meaning the damage that you see uh, is, in reality, the vehicle is probably a lot worse than what you see. So if we just take a look at this vehicle, for example, this just came in. I believe this was hit either backing in or pulling out of a space. Um, we certainly know that with the four-wheel steering, it feels really different. I know the first time I moved the Cybertruck from a parking space, I sort of felt like I was going to hit the car next to me because the angle was so different the way it sort of pulled out of the space. Very strange. Same thing backing in um, because the back end moves differently. You're used to that stable rear end and the front end that can move you around. Well, if the back end's moving too, it kind of messes with your perception a little bit. So. Certainly, we're going to see issues like this for a while. I know that um, driving it just for a short time, you start to understand uh, how it works and you naturally drive differently. So, in this case, it looks like someone backed out of a space and either hit a bollard or a wall or something here. Um, looks like fairly simple cosmetic damage. Um, we can see that this door came in uh, and the mirror assembly came in and pierced and shattered the quarter glass. So obviously it needs a quarter glass and we have this mirror assembly here that is gone. Um, so this will need to be replaced. Okay, so I'm gonna close the door here so we can take a look. And I, what I want you to see here is the gap between the fender panel and the door. So the door's in. And then if we go to the back of the door and look at the same, we can see the door is out here from the rear door. So, what's happening here? Come across the top and take a peek. We can see the flush on the top is in, the flush on the bottom is out. The flush on the top is in, the flush on the bottom is out. So we have a door that's essentially sitting this way. So, top in bottom out. It's sort of sitting this way. Now if we look at the door panel itself, if I was to take some isopropyl alcohol and just wipe this off, there's really not much damage on this door itself. So you'd have to, if we can get the camera down this way, you can see a little bit of rippling. There's some up in here, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of damage on the door itself. So why is that? What we know is this is an ultra strong sort of exoskeleton vehicle. As I said earlier, it's a bulletproof panel. Potentially, and we're gonna measure here and take a look, potentially the panel that this bolts to is going to have more damage than the exterior panel. Um, that's kind of nuts and is a, 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 a completely different paradigm shift when it comes to collision repair, especially for appraisers and customers saying, oh, it's really not that much damage. Well, we don't really know how much damage there is on this, and we're gonna kind of walk you through so you can see. But it's concerning that we see very little exterior deformation on the panel, yet it came in hard enough to break the quarter glass and the door doesn't fit properly. So, if we go down the bottom, we can see another impact to the rocker cover and the wheel opening molding, and we have a problem with the bottom of the fender where it meets the door and it doesn't meet so most likely this fender panel is also pushed in. Not as concerned about what's under the fender as much as I'm concerned about what's happening with what's called the A pillar of the vehicle or the hinge pillar where it bolts to. So uh, we wanted to take this one as one of the first in collision repair really to put out on YouTube for everyone to understand. We're gonna to need to really think differently when we look at Cybertruck uh, about what's wrong with the vehicle. So not 
trying to scare anyone. I don't believe it's going to cost any more to fix these. I, it has nothing to do with that. Um, but it's going to look very different uh, as we start to get into these things. So we need to all talk more with our customers about these. We need to talk more with insurers so they understand what's really happening here. And this is going to be a great example for us to go through. So there's one concern. Other concern with uh, Cybertruck is the 48 volt architecture and what Tesla calls a mid-voltage system. So uh, you can detect mid-voltage components on a Cybertruck by the color of the connector. Uh, it also does have a, some low voltage 12 to 16 volt um, components on the vehicle, which those operate um, very much in the traditional way. But we do have an 800 volt battery that's feeding a 48 volt um, architecture for, for the mid voltage system. Here's a concern. I'll, I'll take a look. This mirror assembly was broken off and on in the accident here and most likely this is what caused most of this damage and fingers crossed we don't have any deformation of the A pillar but we'll measure it. But here's a concern. In, in a lot of shops you may wind up, you may have a technician just simply take a pair of wire cutters and snip through this. Um, really bad idea with a 48 volt system. It's probably a bad idea anywhere on a uh, vehicle with a lot of technology in it. So um, with this vehicle, we know we need to safe out the mid voltage system. What's, what would happen potentially at 48 volts um, as we disconnect something very simple as a headlight that has a very traditional connector? As we disconnect, there's uh, the potential for an arc across the connector. So sort of like plugging in a 220 volt appliance or something and you see that, uh, that spark as you make the final connection. Because of the 48 volt architecture, it could arc. And if it does arc, it could burn out lots of components on the vehicle. So again, this paradigm shift about, hey, can we maybe do a quick dismantle on a car and take a look at what's wrong with it so we have a better understanding. Uh, be super careful as you're disconnecting things on Cybertruck. If it is a mid-voltage connection, potentially it could arc across the connection and cause all kinds of damage, and who knows what that would cost. Not trying to scare anyone here by any means, but I think it's important as we um, start to repair these incredibly advanced vehicles that we think very differently about what we're doing here. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this vehicle apart. We're going to measure systems. We're going to look at the mid-voltage systems and see what's actually wrong with this vehicle. But uh, we wanted to get started here with this one uh, to really help everyone understand what potentially um, might be required to actually repair one of these things properly. So here we go, more to come. Okay, so we've got our Cybertruck measured and what we had to do was to measure the, the position in space of our hinges here because as we saw, this door had a funny fit. It was out uh, on one end and in on the other which indicated maybe there was some structural damage. So the good news is we used the 3D measuring system on this and we found that all of our control points in our A pillar here um, are all in good shape. So no structural damage here. But the interesting thing that we want to take a look at is the damage on the door itself. So let's go over and take a peek at the door. So one of the really unique sort of paradigm shifts in how we think about um, appraising damage on a Cybertruck is this idea of the exoskeleton. So you've all read that this is a bulletproof panel and I, I can tell you this panel is hard as a rock and uh, you certainly don't want to punch it because you'll break your hand. But incredibly hard exoskeleton. The components underneath of the outer skin are actually weaker than the outer skin. So what does that mean? So we, if we take a look at the area of deflection and the damage on this panel, it seems to be pretty minor. Uh, you can see it, we'll do some close-ups, you can kind of see it right here. So you go, yeah, it's, it's probably not too bad, but we saw that really funky fit on this door. Um, by the way, we will try to make a repair on some of these panels, not in this video, but in another, and we'll show you, is it possible to make repairs to dents uh, in some of these panels with really good metal straightening, and at the end of the day, what would the cost of that be? But we'll also show you in another video how to refinish 
this uh, metal. So uh, Tesla has what they call a refinishing procedure, and we'll kind of walk through the details of that. But essentially, this is uh, not brushed stainless, but it's maybe sort of burnished. And um, there is a way to return that um, look to the panel. So if you do have a scratch or a gouge, there's a pretty good chance you can fix that stuff and not have to replace this panel. But in any case, if we look at this panel again, we can see this area of deflection on the panel. It's, it looks to be pretty minor. Um, this is going to be a challenge, especially appraising and working with insurers on what it actually costs to fix some of these things because the biases from the past and internal combustion engine vehicles, in this case, non-exoskeleton vehicles, would be that's pretty minor damage and you should be repairing that. But I'm gonna turn this panel over so we'll take a look at the inside. And I have to tell you, this door is heavy as hell. So this vehicle is a 10,000 pound vehicle. By the way, now that we have it stood up, if you take a look at this interior surface, you can see this is a bit shinier so the sort of burnishing that's done on the exterior of this panel is not done on the interior so it's a good look to see what do they look like when they just come straight out of body and white what's that process look like so we know the exterior of this has a sort of burnished finish more to come on that in a little bit but i'm going to turn this panel all the way over so let's take a look here now we had that bad fit and we were concerned that the A pillar was damaged. And so in a close up, what we'll see is here is where our hinge came in and bent the inner structure of the door. So hopefully we can pick this up in the video, but you'll actually see where that hinge has come in and pushed the inner structure of that door in. Uh, if we look here, here's a good witness mark on the very top where the exterior panel is now separated from the interior panel and we may have to look down this way to see where the structural adhesive that holds that panel together is now separated in here, right? So what we know is this shell component is bent. It, there's an inner reinforcement here that supports the mirror assembly and supports a lot of the door. It's bent as well and it's pulled away. And what's interesting is the exterior panels really show very little damage. So this, this is damaged, this is damaged. In this case, we do need to replace this door. Um, we may try to do a repair on this in another video just to see what happens. One of the first things we have to understand is what kind of heat, if any, uh, can these panels sustain in a repair? So my guess is probably none with this alloy and it may be a cold repair is about all you can do. So good news is no structural damage uh, on the A pillar on the Cybertruck. The damage is isolated to the door itself um, and we're going to go ahead and replace this door. We'll show you the refinishing procedure on the door as well as the fender that's getting replaced on this. More to come, but again, the, the point is what you see on a Cybertruck is not necessarily what's actually happening because of this idea of an exoskeleton. It's going to take a while um, for appraisers to really understand um, what could be wrong with a Cybertruck. So uh, the, the days of understanding um, or appraising damage uh, with a picture uh, or just your eyeballs are, are long gone, especially with all the digital systems inside this vehicle. Okay, so there's a peek at the structural damage on a Cybertruck and how we've been able to identify where it is. Um, we're going to show another video on the final repair and some of the other elements, as we said, on Cybertruck. Otherwise, that's about it for understanding um, structural damage on Cybertruck. Any questions you have about Cybertruck, Tesla EV repairs, anything at all, please leave uh, in the comments below uh, or reach out to us directly. We'll be glad to answer. If there's anything you want to see on Cybertruck, any special things you need to know, we're glad to put some videos together to show you that stuff. As always, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.